refuse to throw in the towel and do nothing. We refuse to let Detroit go bankrupt. I bet on American workers and American ingenuity, and three years later, that bet is paying off in a big way. He refused to let Detroit go bankrupt? What, what, what just happened last week? Have you heard from Obama on this issue at all? John Robson joins me now in studio. And John, I know you're writing about this on the weekend, but it's fascinating that a president who had time to just pop into the White House pre press briefing to talk about Trayvon Martin has had nothing to say about a major city in America, a major city that is, well, more than 80% black, I believe? 83%. 83% black, African-American, go bankrupt, which means a lot of African-Americans are being affected by this. He has nothing to say about that. Yeah, and he has nothing to say about the crisis in governance in America. Barack Obama really has become the bystander-in-chief, uh, the man with the silver-tongued oratory who has not only has no solutions to America's pressing problems, but won't talk about them. He's always on about something else. He's found time to be sad that Alan Thomas passed away. He's found time to be sad about the train crash in Spain. But the bankruptcy of Detroit, the biggest one since the Great Depression, possibly a harbinger of catastrophes He hasn't to follow, even put out a statement on it? There is nothing on the White House site that I could find. Even a search yielded nothing. He, yeah, he met the president of Vietnam, who you've never heard of and never will. Uh, he had time to talk about climate change. He gave a speech in Jacksonville. We talked about infrastructure. Nothing about Detroit. And, and I mean, as you point out, you've got a city that is 83% black and is in ruins. 50,000 feral dogs. So these little black kids trying to get to school are going to be chased by wild dogs. And this doesn't interest him. 70,000 abandoned buildings. So it's like the vandals swept through, but there are no vandals. Now, some people are saying Detroit has very special problems. And it does have a troubled history, the, not only the riot of 67, but an anti-black riot in 43. And people point to the fact that this was a city of 1.8 million people in 1950. I think we have a board of the population yeah. decline. It, it has and just it has gone, gone down, down steadily and down and from down. There. So 1970, that's year before I was born, it was still at about 1.5 million people. In my lifetime, it's been cut by more than half. And yet, if this is the problem, Detroit would be an outlier, a freak case. And we might even be hearing about bailouts. No one's saying bailout because they know so many other cities are in trouble, including Barack Obama's former hometown, Chicago. And I looked at the, the comparison because Chicago was still a booming city. It's not in decay like Detroit. And we have a board with some comparisons. Uh, Chicago's population is 2.7 million. The first one, it's how much of the municipal operating budget goes on pensions plus interest on the debt. Detroit, 40%. Chicago, 33 So it's comparable, though Chicago doesn't have Detroit's problems. The unfunded liability. Now, these numbers are very hazy. Chicago has been maintaining that it's at $19 billion. It suddenly come out it's more like 36 Detroit, $36 billion in unfunded, unfunded liabilities. liabilities. Is, is that all in their, their pensions? Pensions, health, uh, mostly it's obligations so to all, retired municipal employees. All, all promises that they've made to retirees, some of whom will be well off, but a lot of whom are, you know, let's face it, even if you've been a municipal worker for years, you're on a fixed income. Doesn't matter what that fixed income is, you're on a fixed income, that pension goes bust. Boom. Yeah, and you're counting on it. Whatever, where you've chosen to live, the arrangements you've made in your life, you've calculated the money will be there. And if it's not, you're in huge trouble. Yeah, Detroit, it's probably around $9 billion. Again, we're not entirely sure. And then you look, if we can get that board back, uh, the critical thing, per capita, unfunded liabilities in these two cities are very closely comparable, slightly higher in Chicago than Detroit, around 12000 per person in Detroit, 13000 in Chicago. So that most critical number is the same in these cities. And how have they done it? They've punted it down the road. They've denied reality. In fact, in Detroit right now, there's a lawsuit trying to stop the bankruptcy filing on the grounds that the Michigan Constitution guarantees public pensions. And since the bankruptcy filing would affect Detroit public pensions, there are actually lawyers saying there is no bankruptcy filing. You know, this is, this is a reality thing. You saw Barack Obama saying, I'm not going to let Detroit go bankrupt. You don't have a choice. Detroit is bankrupt. You may have choices about what you do about the bankruptcy, although Barack Obama seems to have nothing to say about that. But this is a reality thing. And it's blue America particularly. Detroit, Michigan is very heavily Democratic. Chicago, Illinois, heavily Democratic. Municipal bankruptcies in California, heavily Democratic. This is a problem for blue America. In, in Where's the, the great president on this if chicago goes that's an even bigger problem i mean that's i 
I've tended to drive through Detroit on the way to Chicago. We've got family in the Chicago suburbs, used to spend uh, a lot of summers in my youth there. It is a great city. Whatever you think of blue, red, whatever, it is a great city. It is a big city, uh, surpassed only recently by Toronto as the fourth largest in all of North America, Mexico, United States, Canada. It was the fourth, now it's the fifth largest. If that goes down, that is dramatic. Yeah, and Moody's, which just knocked Chicago's credit rating down three ticks at one go because they suddenly went holy cow what are we doing lending money to this city look at the look at the balance sheet and moody's also commented that the state of illinois may be in some trouble this business of politicians who keep giving public sector unions lavish pensions early retirement and high wages in return for political support at election time and we know about this in ontario as well this is a a chronic problem in modern politics this but is across the country it now turns out that everybody knows about them like, oh yeah sure we find we know about this well then why didn't we do something about it why aren't we doing something about it what are we waiting for are we all meant to go back to sleep now that detroit Motown, the heart of America, is in this kind of trouble, and any number of other cities and even states might be in the same trouble. And you, but you know, Barack Obama, if it's not about more government, he can't see it apparently. But where's everybody else on this? What's, where's Kathleen Wynne on the fact that, yeah, we can't continue to give the teachers all this money, even though we love to have their support at elections, because the thing might be unsustainable. It's bad enough that social programs are creating dependency among the populace. Within the public sector, there's this critical hole. And these pension liabilities that are not funded, we have those too. Not as bad as Detroit, but we've got them. Now everybody's saying they know all about this. Well, I guess you're suave and sophisticated then. Fine. Shall we do something about it that doesn't involve denial of reality. John Robson, thanks so much. Send me your thoughts, byline at sunmedia.ca. And, and what are you doing about it? Are you, wherever you are in the country, this is likely a problem in your municipality, in your province. Are you voting to fix it?